Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> I just don't understand Chester, Mrs. O'Neill. Well, uh, sometimes, Kitty, when people get excited, they can't eat. And uh, Chester's mighty excited. We all know that. Don't worry about him. He's not missing any meals. He ate supper early, and I'm pledged to bring him a half a pie when I come back. <laughs> You'd expect Chester to react the way most people do. Of course, he eats more when he's excited. Well, what's he doing when he couldn't have supper with the rest of us? Packing. He packed all day yesterday. Yeah, and he'll pack right up to leaving time in the morning. Mm -hmm. You taking the wagon up north? No, just our horses. And a pack horse? No. Well, then he can't possibly take all this stuff with him. <laughs> well, he'll figure that out last thing tomorrow morning. Then he'll pick up his rifle and his bedroll, and we'll start off. It happens this way every long trip we make. Can't seem to break him of it. How long since you were up on the agency? Uh, a couple of years. Uh, oh, yes, yes, I remember, too. You and Whip shot enough deer to feed us all winter. <laughs> Chester stayed on with the squads and made me a little pottery bulk. Yeah, Chester's not much interested in hunting. Well, now, maybe that's good. You turn a wild man like Chester loose on the agency, he's, he's liable to clean it of game in no time. You know, if there's one couple I envy, it's Whip and Gladys. You're hacking to be an Indian agent, kid? No, but they're doing what they want to do. They believe in it, and they're good at it. Yeah, I sure never heard of Whip having any trouble with the Sioux. Have you, Matt? Uh, he's fair. The Sioux know it. They're a proud people. Whip respects that. Gladys is a big help, too. No, Kitty's right. It's a good life. I'll bet they'd be glad to see you. A uh, surprise, most likely. Surprise? Well, are you saying they're not expecting you? Well, I'm saying I didn't write ahead telling them I'm coming. Why, well, Matt Dillon. Uh, they told me to come any time. Uh, they got something near 400 Sioux on the agency. And two more people, one way or the other, aren't going to matter much. It'd be a courtesy to Gladys. You got any mail from trail bosses or drovers telling you they'll be coming up from Texas? Well, no. Of course not. Well, you know, they'll be coming, don't you? Well, sure I do, only... Yeah, you'd be glad to see them. Make them feel welcome once they're here, right? It's not the same thing at all. <laughs> Doc. Huh? Me? Oh, no. No, 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 you don't. I quit listening a minute ago. I, I'm not going to get drawn into this discussion, even if I have to go and help Chester pack. <laughs> As sorry as I can be, Mr. Jones. Forget it, Chester. I don't know that I can ever forget it. <laughs> well, you can quit talking about it. That'd help. Yeah, no, sir, I can't. Talking it out's going to be the one thing to make me see it clear. Uh, of course, I had it packed in the first place. We both know that. Mm -hmm. Had it in the very same carpet bag with them new boots, my underwear, and a side of bacon. And the time come to sort out what I'd take for sure... And mind you, you, you was hounding me not to bring so many extras. Yeah, I remember that. Well, so I figure, who needs new boots? And that's the way I come to leave the coffee pot behind. Yeah. Well, we managed with ten cans so far. And in another three miles or so, Gladys will have a pot on the stove. I sure won't make that mistake again. Yeah. Next time, bring your boots, Chester. Look down Mr. Dillon. Coming over that ridge. Looks huh. like a welcoming party. Yeah, it might be. Well, I declare, it appears to me they're all Indians, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> well, it's a Sioux reservation, Chester. Well, yes, of course it is. So let's hold up a minute. I tell you, if they're riding toward you this way, it's comforting to know they ain't hostile. Yeah, you bet it is. You, both get off horse. 
Aren't you Big Feather? I am Big Feather. Get off horse. Mr. Jones. Get off, Chester. Tonya. Look through packs. Make search. Mm. What are they looking for, Mr. Jones? I don't know. I, uh... I guess you don't remember me, Big Feather. Matt Dillon. You are a friend of White Agent. Big Feather know you. You bring wagon? No. Bring pack mule? No, we're just as you see us. You find nothing? Nothing, Big Feather. Then why you come? To visit my friend, the White Agent. He asked you come? No. What's wrong here, Big Feather? Has something happened to Whip? You ask him. He's all right, then, huh? You ask him. Big Feather, I've come here before many times. You and I, we've hunted together. I count you my friend, too. Why do you stop me now and search me? You have many questions. White agent has many answers. Now, I ask you questions. Why you let me stop you? You have gone. Look, me, my braves, we have no gun. He's right, Mr. Jones. No one of them has a gun. Well, who took your guns, Big Feather? You ask white agent. Will I be stopped again on my right end? My people will not stop you. My God, there's sure something I miss here, Mr. John. Yeah, I'm afraid so, Chester. I just hope Whip and Gladys are all right. <laughs> Some answer here. Mr. Dillon, Whip's house ain't looking too good itself. No, it isn't. Could be they're not here, I guess. No, somebody's coming. Get out of here, I'll blow your head off. Whip. Shotgun down. That's you, Chester. Yes, whip kid. You can't always tell what's there and what isn't. Come in, both of you. Come on. What are you locking against, Whip? Trouble. Get out. Get out. some hunting. 
But that'll come later. You sure you won't have a drink? What was that? Oh, artillery like this. We got army near here, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll head on out to the storeroom. You get some sleep, huh? Just might, Matt. You here. I might sleep. I just might feel safe enough. Sound like artillery to you? No, it's not artillery, Chester. Heaviest I ever heard, it is. I haven't heard it enough to be sure, but it sounds like dynamite to me. Here, I guess Gladys will be inside here. Gladys? Matt! Matt! Oh, you gave me a fright. Chester and me were scaring everybody half to death today. It is you. It is really you and Chester. Yes, ma'am, it sure is. I just never thought I'd, I'd see any of my friends again. I'm sorry. What? Gladys, is it that bad? Oh, Matt, it's hell. It's plain hell. Well, what happened? Have you seen him? Whip? Yeah, sure we've seen him. I still don't get the straight of what's going on here. Well, don't expect it from me, Matt. I don't know. I honestly don't know. He's not the same. Whip's no more the man I married or any part of him than than any stranger you could mention. And if the Indians have turned against him, maybe he's got cause to change. Well, maybe he has. I don't know. But he took their guns. They must have done something. Taking their guns was the last he did. Before that, it was their food. You mean to say Whip is holding back food from them? Yes, they came to him with some complaint. I I, I don't know what it was. Something about their hunting grounds. Whip got enraged. Really enraged. And he began to cut back their rations. Finally, their guns. I don't know what'll happen next. How long has it been like this? Oh, months, months. I don't know. You hear that a lot, do you, Gladys? All the time. There must be big trouble somewhere. I never heard the army guns this close before. Yeah. Well, look, Gladys, we told Whip we'd spell you here so that you could get some rest. Oh, no. I, I mean, I, I'm not tired. And you must be riding all this way. I, I, I'm fine, really. And, and later when Whip comes down, I'll fix you a nice supper. Now, then... You just let us take over like Miss Dillon says. You look kindly peeking at me. No, I, I'm perfectly fine. I, I won't let you... This, uh, where the guns are locked up, Lattice? Uh, I, I, I think so. I, I'm not sure. Please, Matt, I wish you'd... You wish I'd stay out of it? Yes. Yes, I wish you would. All right. I know you're not afraid, Gladys. What makes you think I'm not? A whip is. He's got a shotgun and he keeps himself locked and bolted in his own house. You're not armed. I I never was a hand with guns. You know that. And the door here, it was open. We just walked in. (laughs) I I must have forgotten. You never were a hand to lie, either. (sighs) Oh, Matt. Matt, I'm afraid. I'm terrified. But I feel responsible. Please don't ask me to explain it. Just go on back to Whip. I really think he needs more help than I do. Maybe he does it that. I've been mulling over in my mind the afternoon long, Miss Dillon. I just don't understand Gladys giving them guns back to Indians. I didn't say she did, Chester. I said the lock on that cabinet was forced, and she sure didn't want me to look any closer than I did. You think that's what she meant by feeling responsible? That's what she said. Responsible? No, I don't think that's what she meant. 
I'm hoping Big Fella can shed some light on that. Mm. Only it don't make sense. Say she did give Big Brother and the others their guns. Need to just turn on whip, kill him, maybe? Oh, Chester, he's outnumbered 400 to 1. If they wanted to kill him, they could have done it long ago. Well, how come they had guns in the first place? The treaty, the Sioux, Cheyenne, natural hunters, the treaty gave them the right to keep their guns for hunting when they came on the reservation. Were you saying whip has broke the Indian treaty? And on the face of things, yes. Maybe he's had cause. You sure this is Big Feather's Lodge? was the last time I was here. You come from White Agent? I come on my own, Big Feather. You and I make talk. You talk. I want you to take me hunting tomorrow. Like before, you and I hunt together. No good hunt. Now, what do you mean? Game run. All gone. No good hunt. Well, what happened to the game? Ask White Agent. Now, listen to me, Big Fella. I want some answers out of you. Everything's changed here, and I want to know why. I want you to tell me what's wrong. You not believe game all gone? Not until you show me. I don't believe, no. Tomorrow, with the sun, I show. Good, with the sun. You bring your rifle, we hunt. Not have rifles. No guns. You sure? No guns. Or maybe your friend, the white squirrel. Hey, no friend. Take papoose. No friend to Indian. Now, what do you mean? First hunting grounds, then food, then guns. Now take papoose. Take papoose. You will hunt with me tomorrow, Big Feather? With the sun. My family gun, I'm just about to give up. I plain don't get a thing through my skull around here. Well, why don't you go on up to the house and go to bed? That means you ain't going to? No, not yet, Chester. Mm. I'll go along right now. It sure ain't been the day I look forward to. Good night. Good night, Mr. Dillon. talking to Big Feather earlier. What'd he tell you? I guess you know. He says you're going to take their papooses. Oh, I knew it. I told you I feel responsible for so much of this. I thought I could make him understand. But it only made things worse. Understand what? Oh, things have been so bad here. I, I, I thought I could offer them a little hope. They used to trust me. I told them we'd start a school for the youngsters. And they took it to mean that you were going to steal their young ones away, huh? A year ago, they'd have understood. But now the hate that's built up, the fears, the, the, the mistrust. I was a fool to say it. Well, you were trying your own way, Gladys. Nothing wrong with that. I was... I was sharp with you, Matt. Telling you to stay out of it. But I was afraid. Afraid I'd find the guns gone? No, no, the lock, it, it was forced. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, but, but the guns are still there. I checked. I, I, I wanted you to leave so I could replace the lock before Whip found out. Uh, believe me, Matt, the, the guns are still there. I believe you, Clarence. Whip's in there now? He's still sun up. I, I spell him then. Matt, what can we do? I don't know yet. Tell me this. Has Whip ever asked the Army to come in and straighten this out? Never once. I've asked him to, but he says it's his business. Well, maybe tomorrow I'll know more whose business it is. Oh, Mr. Dillon, I'm so glad you're back. This is a terrible thing. What is it, Chester? He's had him standing there since he found out old men, women all this day in the hot sun, no water, no food. Oh, what the devil for? It's them fool guns have been stole. He's been hitting out of everybody near beat Gladys to death for a fool to free of it. When did it happen? Right after sunup. Right after Gladys fell him. He went back to the storeroom and found them gone. Oh, he has been so mean, Mr. Gunn. All right, where is he now? Yonder, turning their lodges apart, looking for them guns. You better look out for him. He's drunk and wild. You better look out for me. Look, there he is. Yeah, I see him. 
Whip. Whip. Stop it. Huh? You in on this too, Dylan? If you've got trouble, you're asking for every inch of it. They got their guns back. I can't find them, but I will, I will, and I'll turn them on the lot of them. You're out of your head, Whip. Now, what kind of a friend are you? I've seen the miners, Whip, blasting holes all over the reservation, driving the game away. That big artillery you were telling me about. Well, they tell me they pay you pretty good to let them mine on government property. You hear me? They got their guns back, and I gotta find them. I'm not gonna help you look. A rotten thing you've done, treaty breaking. This could start an uprising, sure. All they need is their guns. Matt, you're a friend. I was a friend. I looked through every lodge, twice over. They, they've got them, but where? Where? You better give them a look in over long as they're lined up here. Where's an Indian gonna hide a gun? You walk down this line with me. Do you see anything? A lot of mangy Indians. That's all. Come on, let's try another line up. Why? What for? This is just a waste of time. You're crazy blind, drunk, mean blind. You take a good look. Up and down all the lines with the beads the squaws are wearing, the bracelets, their shells, cartridges. The old men are leaning on canes, only their gun barrels. The kids got arrowheads hanging from their belts, and right along with them, gun locks, hammers. You mean they took the guns apart? They're wearing them? Yeah. And if you're lucky, maybe the army will get here before they got a chance to put them together. The army? You're through, Whip. All through. Chester and I will stop at Fort Kearney on our way out. And we'll be taking Gladys with us. If she'll go. and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Kathleen Height, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Vic Perrin, and Ralph Moody. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Thank mm-hmm. you.